The first time that a woman made me feel appreciated or made me feel like a man was this woman in Thailand or was this woman in uh, Colombia or this woman in Brazil. And the response from black women tends to be, well, we ain't want your ass, no way. I'm trying to take that conversation a little bit deeper. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Sublime. Um, all right, so <laughs> one of the beefs that I'm in on YouTube. It's it's not a real place. But anyway, one of the, one of the beefs I'm in on YouTube is with a group slash movement called SYSBM. It stands for Save Yourself Black Man. Have you heard about this? Hold up, what? SYSBM, Save Yourself Black Man. Who are they saving themselves from? Black chat. So, 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 so to put it, to, to give you kind of full context, basically. This is a real group? It's a real movement. Absolutely. I don't, I don't know if it's a, um, if it's a group per se, but like they have people that are considered the founders of the ideology. They have people who subscribe to the ideology. Um, the beef started because, um, I would see people comment in my comment section, hashtag, uh, this is why I left SYSBM. Uh, these women are just beyond saving SYSBM, you know. Um, but basically, the their ministry is that our community is beyond saving, particularly because our women are so unwilling to work with us particularly because our women are so unwilling to offer us any value for the value that is expected of us. Um, and then some other shit that I definitely don't agree with. But what are your thoughts just by hearing Save Yourself Black Man? What are your thoughts on that immediately? Or questions even? It's, it's a little weird, but so... Feel, okay, save yourself, black men. So they, so what are they doing? So leaving, they, they're leaving the country. <laughs> oh, oh, them. Okay, I think I seen um, somebody post something about black men. Something about a passport. I think that's what you're talking about. Passport bros. Yeah. It's close. I, I would say passport bros are different. Okay, but I think I see there's a lot of overlap sometimes yeah. on Facebook about that. What is I, I guess for me, what are they saying our community as black people or just women? Because I feel like you can't what what is it that there are, are they, is the, do they think we're, I guess I'm trying to figure out, is it the whole community or just women? Cause are you just leaving because you can't find the right woman for you? It's, <clears throat> it's, um, technically now, I don't know if most of the people who subscribe to it have actually done their full due diligence to understand the nuances of it. But mm -hmm. technically it's, I'm leaving the community, okay. I, the black community. I have, especially the black American community. I have no duty to it. Um, it has done nothing for me, so it can expect nothing from me, right? Um, but more specifically, it's because the Western world mm -hmm. is um, liberal. And in its liberalness, is pedestalizing the whims of the female delegation over the male delegation. And especially in the black community, um, our community is a matriarchy, right? The, the, the men have been locked away. 
The men have been turned out. The men have been systemically castrated, right? So most of the authority figures in our community, until some dudes, until they get to college, they don't have a black male teacher, right? Is women, right? And, and that goes back to the superiority complex I was talking about earlier. But men, and unfortunately, it is the men that would be useful from just a technical skill standpoint, um, or saying that there is nothing here for me because I'm not even appreciated for what it is that I've done or have accomplished. Um, and the first time that a woman made me feel appreciated or made me feel like a man was this woman in Thailand or was this woman in uh, Colombia or this woman in Brazil. And the response from black women tends to be, well, we ain't want your ass, no way. I'm trying to take that conversation a little bit deeper. Um, but what what are your what are your thoughts so far? My thoughts are do they truly understand the history of our country and what have they done individually to for the betterment of the black community for women? Because to me, it sounds like you, in a sense, like, did you really ever care? I don't, I mean, black people get on my nerves sometimes too, but I can't leave us behind. Like, I feel like that's a slap in the face to our ancestors. It's a slap in the face to the, to the people who are doing good who are doing the work like what what have they done they may have the technical skills but clearly real quick uh, real quick um to kind of juxtapose it and people hate when i make this comparison but i think the comparison is is apt um have you heard of the divestors mm -mm. so the divestors are basically black women typically dark-skinned black women uh, who feel similarly disenfranchised from the black community. And their whole thing is, get you a white man. Mm. Okay, now, I didn't know it was a name for it, yeah. but I, 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 I... Now, this is, I bring that up because the attitude um, when a black woman is presented with, for instance, a, a fellow black woman with a white man tends to be very different from the attitude of when you're presented with a black man with a white woman. Why that difference? Is it different for you? No, okay. absolutely not. But do you, do you see that it is typically in the mainstream? It's like, yes, yeah, girl, versus, oh, he must be one of them. I, what, yeah, what I see is... Um, I do see some women under the comments, I guess, saying the same thing. The guys say, well, they don't want us anyway. So, you know, do you home girl and all this and this and that. So, and then some people will be like, kudos to her. Ain't my cup of tea, but kudos to her. I mean, I'm not going to ever down anyone for who they decide to love, but no, I will down you. <laughs> I was going to let you finish. <laughs> let, let me rephrase that. I don't down the people when it's genuine. They're not saying, I'm going to find me a white man. I'm going to find me a white woman. Some people end up in interracial relationships because of proximity. Those are... And that's just kind of how it happens, whatever it is. They're not necessarily looking for a white woman or white man. It just so happened to happen. And if that's your thing, cool. Now, those people that intentionally seek out because they feel the others are better, I do have a problem with that. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. I have a problem with it. And I think it's sad and I think it's self-hatred because it's just like, how do you get so happy about sleeping with masses 
granddaughter, great granddaughter. Like how I like you already. How how does that how does that I don't get it. I don't see the pride in it. Like her people probably don't like you. And I think it's important if you're with someone that the families can get along. Like it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're when you're coming together in a relationship marriage, you're 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 building your tribe. So the y'all got to be able to come together in a good way. And if they don't like you already and she's just I don't know. I, I don't do, get it. do you agree that a lot more grace is given the other way around? From women, I, I do think from women that, to other women who got themselves a white man. Yeah, I, I I see it now because it is I've noticed that it's becoming more of a thing. Like, but I do know most black women we try to stay within. But I do see um I do see that it's not it's not criticized as much. Help me but make also sense of that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't know. I guess because if as maybe them as black women, and you're right, it does tend to be deep, deep, dark skinned women that you mostly are going to see, not all the time, but most of the time with white men. And I, that hurt comes from not, I know it's come from not being loved by your own black men. Not feeling wanted. Not feeling wanted. Not feeling like you're good enough. You're pretty enough. They desire. A lot of them desire a racially ambiguous or a lighter skinned black woman. Um, you have a lot of colorist black men. You do. So maybe they've been hurt so long and just and it's I'm not justifying it, but they hadn't been told they were beautiful until this white man told them they were beautiful. So, but you see the parallel? No, I def it's definitely <laughs> parallel. I'm not, I, I don't, I feel like, I, I don't. And, and I think, you know, I, I think, you know, despite the fact that I have my qualms with the Save Yourself movement, I think, like I said before, the fact that men are finally having a chance to speak their piece, um, hopefully it results in us having a bit more empathy because for a lot of those men, that was their experience. Very similar to the black women mm -hmm. not feeling wanted. Um, they didn't feel wanted as well, whether from their mom, they didn't feel validated. You know what I'm saying? They didn't feel treated well just on the street by black women, even though they were good dudes, relatively speaking. Um, but I think we've been so socialized to empathize more easily with women than men. You know, it's just for the men, it's just pick better. For the women, well, if these niggas were better men, we wouldn't do this. They be telling us to pick better, too. I, I see the comments all the time. That's who you chose. That's who you chose. Like, this is oh, fact. my God. We all choose. All of us. So that segues perfectly into the namesake of this series. Uh, you know, the series is called Kevin Samuels Started This Conversation. I'm going to just give you the floor. What is your... Opinion, thoughts, feelings about the late Kevin Samuels. I, I'm gonna be honest. Be completely honest. I I didn't follow him. I don't I don't watch his stuff like that. I don't, I'm one of them people that I might have saw clips here and there, and maybe half of an episode is something came up and it just happened. I happened to scroll past it. Um. From, but from what I've seen, I think his approach was probably the biggest thing. Um, I didn't really care for when I would see the clips of judging, of having the women rate themselves and all of that stuff. I feel like, one, I feel like I don't know why the women did that anyway. But... Um, I don't really know his, I think it, I think it's mostly his approach because to tell somebody they're not worthy 
based off of how they look physically, that they can, shouldn't have this type of dude and because of how they look or whatever it is. Because a lot of his views, when he would ask them their weight and stuff, it's very, it can be very Eurocentric. Black women are built different. Faces, face structure is different. Nose wider, hips might be wider. Things on us tend to be more voluptuous. So from what I would see, it was just like, it just seemed to be very Eurocentric views on what women should uh, be look like or things like that. Other than that, I'm be honest, I don't know nothing about that man. Okay. I, I I tell you, I'm not I'm I'm not one of those people that I see these relationship people, gurus yeah. and all that stuff. I might look at it here and there just to see what they talk about or something went viral. But I'm big on you have to have I, I the reason I don't is because I feel like they tend to have this one way like blankets they make a lot of blanket statements as if this is the only way a relationship is should be this is how it has to work this is how it has to be when in reality there are, people have to do what works for them so, so I, I don't the, the the reason for me Kevin Samuels is such an interesting figure interesting case study um I also didn't like follow him to the T right mm -hmm. um but I think he's interesting because this was one of the first times that I could think of that women were held to task. Because, you know, in 2020, he went viral for, you know, the whole average at best video. You know, the lady that he told to rate That's herself, the, the, the dog he walker, dog business groomer lady. Okay. Who was making six figures. What he call, did he call her a six? six? Yeah. No, no. She called herself a six and he was like, oh, you're shit. average at best. Uh, and that's what went Somebody viral. said that. Uh, he, <laughs> I was like, he must be one of them. He must be. <laughs> and that's why, you know, that's why I approach the conversation the way that I do, because Real motherfuckers on the street cannot talk like that. It doesn't, those, oh, you're, the, what, how do you, what's your uh, size, this, this, and that. It doesn't work like that in, mm -hmm. in the street. It has to be more organic conversation. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I think context is vital, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of footage before the viral clip. There's mm -hmm. a lot of footage after the viral clip. And I think what happened before and after is really what's important. We focused on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Because in the clip, what happened is this lady called in and she called him in particular because at the time women considered him the high value man whisperer. Like I said earlier, women are hypergamous, so they want the best possible man they can get. And as a culture, we've defined it as six foot, six pack, six figures, six inches. Right. Um, so they called Kevin Samuels because he had defined what a high value man is and he was giving, uh, women his insight on, on how to attract that type of man. The problem is because of a general lack of self-awareness and because of a more specific lack of female self-awareness, because I'm every woman. That's right. Um, we have been conditioned to only think about what we want. We never stop to consider what that thing might want from us. So when she called the show, she said, Kevin, I make six figures. And here's the important part. I'm finding that I cannot respect a man who makes less than me. Mm. Why can you not respect a man who, who makes less than you? Simply because he makes less than me, right? So I think that was mistakenly framed as a black man trying to put a black woman down. When it was actually more so 
a black man trying to give a black woman perspective from the vantage point of the thing that she claims she wants. Mm -hmm. Because that caliber of man that she's um, identified as the North Star doesn't give a shit about her six figures. You know what he cares about? I was, um, oh, well, a man that makes that much money, he probably wants a woman who's going to be home, take care of the family, possibly. It's before his, that. It's his dinner. Before, what you mean before that? Before, like, being oh, home, take rich care of the kids. Oh, they looking at how you look. They looking at how you look. They definitely look. And that is the context, right? So it wasn't simply he was trying to make her feel bad. It was, I think... And maybe I'm giving Kevin Samuels the benefit of the doubt, but I think what he was really trying to get across was, you don't really want what you think you want. Because I'll see- So was he saying she wasn't cute enough for a man that made a lot of money? Yes. Because that's what it yes. sounds- more, But more so, you're not cute enough for that type of man. You're not ready for the lifestyle that comes along with that type of man. You're not ready for the restrictions that come along with that type. Cause you know, during one of his, uh, his streams, some lady, you know, was saying, yeah, she needs a man to make $600,000 a year. Um, and he basically asked her, do you know how to do uh, country club wife politics? Do you know how to move in those circles? Do you want to move in those circles? Mm -hmm. Is that the type of life you want to live where you see your man once a month? But again, because of our culture, we only consider I want a man making a bunch of money. We don't consider the fact that he's not going to have a bunch of time. He's going to have to be around these types of people that I might not have, you know, an affinity for. But again, because we live in a culture that just says you deserve, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve. The reason why he was such a lightning rod is because it was the first time where he made people do math. Do you qualify for this job at Google? What does your resume say? Do you really want your, uh, using the same Google analogy, do you really want all the information on your laptop to always be available to HR? Most people is no. So no, you don't want to work at Google. You just like what it looks like. Mm -hmm. You know? I do believe, um, and I think I've said this to somebody, that I do believe that once you get with a man with a certain stature, as a woman, if, if if you're not a woman that's, you know, making the same or whatever it is and you're a homemaker, there's a level of autonomy that you kind of lose when go. you're in those relationships. So you do have to be prepared for that. Some some are okay with that. And, you know, I've, I've you know, seen women that's... And some women think... You're right. Some women think they want that, but... You you lose a lot of your own, a lot of time. And and what's fr what's frustrating for me in particular is, you know, um, when you know I'm having these conversations with women, and you know I'm I'm getting to understand kind of their personalities and things like that. Unfortunately, the thing is they still want six figure dude, right? Mm -hmm. Who's who's a boss. And, you know, a bunch of women want him, but he ain't got no bitches. You know what I'm saying? That <laughs> He can fight, but he's still a corporate nigga and this, this and that. And he. Um, but what I'm finding is, although the best man for you, based on your personality, based on the things that you've expressed, is actually a school teacher making $40,000 a year, a coach. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be a good father to your kids. He's going to be around during important uh, times and seasons and holidays and shit like that. But unfortunately, when women are encountered with these men in the real world, they talk down to them. And that's the frustration that's coming. But wouldn't from that men. be a certain type of woman? Because I don't I don't I think on. In most occasions, women are dating regular dudes. You know, the majority of women are out here with six figure plus millionaires and stuff like that. It's just not at least it's not the reality I see. So you're, you're absolutely right. However, they're dating those regular dudes and complaining every day. 
So, so whether it's the dude who's getting, what, what are the complaints? You're not good enough. Because, yeah, because, because I'm, I'm speaking from the from the vantage point of um, the black man, the single black man who's saying, "Yo, these women are talking to me like I ain't shit," and the men in relationships who are saying, "My wife, my girlfriend is talking to me like I ain't shit," because she's comparing me to this fairy tale motherfucker who doesn't exist. And if we're being just blunt, she doesn't even qualify for. It. So she can never actually, uh, whether we're going to use the S word that people hate. What? <laughs> submit. Oh. Whether we use that word, whether we use cooperation, whether we use appreciate, a lot of men don't feel appreciated mm-hmm. because we, we feel like we're being measured to, and I think it's also a consequence of Instagram and shit like that, but we're being measured to the 1% highlight tape. Do you, do, do you feel like some men measure themselves and maybe feel inadequate. And sometimes they um, they put that on the woman. She might be okay, but he's not. He feels like I'm not I'm not doing enough or whatever blase I, I think I think that absolutely happens. I think not as often as the other thing. Right? I, I think um, kind of like we said earlier, um, Contentment isn't necessarily something that comes naturally to women. Like most women have to change their hairstyle twice a week. You know what I mean? Um, so with that being said, it that that takes work. Um, and then the other thing too is like the men who are comparing themselves, typically they are driven men, they are on the path to doing that. So those type of men might say, Oh, I'm not even gonna get into a relationship until I become that dude. Um, or, you know what I'm saying? Um, we're going to have to work out some kind of agreement where I can still grind and do everything that I need to do. Um, but I'm talking about the men who are ready. I'm talking about the men. I just want a good woman, bro. And they're saying that what I met with in the street are women who, uh, your shoes ugly. Or even when I get with them, it's, <laughs> You know, it's, it's the reason why men hate like couple dates because everything these days is a competition. You know, every picture we take is, is so it can be cute enough to end up on the discover page to make your friends jealous. You know, it's never actually about at least this is what men are saying. This is what men are reporting. Can I ask the age group of these men? My average viewer is between 34 and 44. Oh, OK. Yeah. My second largest demographic is between 24 and 29. And I thought it was just, I had a um, a guy, again, I don't know how the hell he got my phone number, but he called me randomly. Oh, wow. And he gave me a whole speech saying, yo, I love what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, this, this, and that. And we got to talking about this other female content creator named Courtney Michelle. Uh, and... Now, mind you, this guy is like in his 50s. Mm-hmm. He, he, during his speech, <laughs> he mentioned how old he was. He makes good money, this, this, and that. But he was like, man, uh, my wife don't even make me feel the way Courtney Michelle makes me feel. The way, the way she, she, she speaks life into me as a black man. The way she incur- Because it, in my wife's eyes, all she sees is everything I'm not. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And unfortunately... I think why some of this seems so foreign is because typically either men don't say anything because we want to, you know, keep everything copacetic, maintain the status quo, because women typically can't take our truth. Um, Or, you know, we don't know how to properly articulate what it is that we're trying to say. And for fear of hurting a woman's feelings or creating another problem for ourselves that we now have to. Spent three hours talking about. I think it's a lot of the latter. Sure. I I think that's the big one because sometimes it is hard to articulate. You don't always know what it is. You know it's something I write, but you can't figure out how do I say this? How, you know, and sometimes that's even for women, but. um, You agree you guys are better at that than us though, right? On average. I guess I may not be that one, but... <laughs> no, you've been a great communicator so far. I don't like hurting people's feelings. Uh, 
I don't like hurting people's feelings. Okay, so I, I can keep, see that. I don't um, I don't say things sometimes when I should. 